Even when people haven't heard of Finkelman, often actually they're walking through environments or they will know places, um, not just in major cities, but in, in, in towns across the country or collections where um, there is some kind of echo or some kind of imprint of his. Um, and really as a result of the earlier research I was doing on Finkelman, people kept asking me questions and I realised that his relevance um, and the ways in which people might engage with him, find his ideas interesting, um, was much, much wider than I'd anticipated. But Finkelman also had um, a big influence in the world, um, and especially in Northern Europe, he was a key figure in terms of promoting the interest in and the desire to imitate classical antiquity, uh, classical sculpture, classical architecture, that really shaped the built environment um, and the museum collections that many of us are familiar with. In fact, this, uh, this library as a, as a building was opened as a library, but uh, it contained more than uh, the books it contained, uh, the, the large bequests and, and the books from the old library. Uh, collections of books were accompanied by collections of coins, of scientific instruments, and a very large and important collection of art. And they, they all were thought as an integral part of the, of the library. It is an 18th century library. Um, it's a beautiful space for this. And the kinds of objects that Christina had, um, the books, but also some of the other objects in the Christchurch collection, are precisely the kinds of objects that people like Winkelmann and his contemporaries, people who went on the Grand Tour, were collecting and were bringing back. Um, we think now about uh, museum collections or gallery collections of classical objects, and we don't really have so much of a sense of the kind of eclecticism of um, collectors in the 17th and 18th centuries. People were interested in collecting manuscripts, people were interested in classical objects, people were interested in things that might relate to interpretation of the Bible, and sometimes just curiosities. Um, but with some small artifacts, we knew that there was an opportunity to fit the objects that the collectors had collected in antiquity. So all of those first two cases are showing really the enthusiasm, the atmosphere of the 18th century collectors down in Italy. And then we move on to the objects that were collected more widely and brought into Northern Europe at the time and through which Winkelmann himself had first encountered antiquity. We try to make the space as much a part of the exhibition as the exhibition on its own. So the exhibition would not be the same in a different space. We have experimented with bringing objects from the Ur out to new places and putting them into different contexts where people can respond to them in different ways. So I also see it as, if you like, expanding the reach of the Ur Museum. Our largest and most interesting vases in the Ur Museum is a Peston Bell Crater, uh, which was in the Vatican collections um, back before the Napoleonic Wars. And we know, know that because it was published um, by one of um, Vickelman's colleagues, shall we say, another scholar working in the Vatican museums, uh, a, a catalogue of the objects. He called them Etruscan vases in the Vatican museums in 1767. And we have a beautiful plate of showing the front of that vase. Uh, we've put it on display in the exhibit opposite the vase itself and we approached our colleagues at the Reading Museum that have some of these um, objects on permanent loan to, well, ongoing loan shall I say, um, to the Europe Museum of Greek Archaeology and the Reading Museum curators were very happy to be part of this so we brought up um, a little tiny piece of plaster, um, painted plaster that seems to have come off of some ancient wall. That was one of the things that really excited me about doing this in Christchurch, that it felt so authentic to have mm. this collection of objects put together in this library. Mm. Um, because the Christchurch library was set up, even though it's in a university setting, to be a kind of gentleman's library, to equip mm -hmm. um, people who were studying at Christchurch, men who were studying at Christchurch, with um, gentlemanly accomplishments and understanding and knowledge. So it felt really authentic to be sort of putting something into the library which really reflected that, that history. Absolutely, absolutely. Juxtaposition of all of these objects together and introducing them to new audiences, as Catherine pointed out earlier, has already shown um, great opportunities for further research. 
There's uh, some research projects ongoing and some coming in the future. Is the research, the new research on the Aphrodite, on the statue of, the, of Aphrodite, which seems uh, to scholars to be much older than we expected. The um, workshops that we organised alongside um, the various exhibitions um, have also brought people together from different fields and from different countries um, in order to talk about, um, yeah, about objects, about collecting um, and about the, the history of the collections that we have in our various institutions um, in a new way. Christine has been very, very kind and very welcoming to us, but it does seem to be um, very appropriate that Christchurch um, and Reading work together. This is where the University of Reading started in the first place um, as an outlying college. We often say of Oxford, but an outlying college of Christchurch, actually. Our, your museum colleagues, um, who are specialists in education, have devised some fantastic activities that um, I, I think are opening up children's eyes, especially children, but their parents learn a lot when they come along too, but um, to something that maybe people don't always grasp when they go into museums is to think about how and why people collected these objects and how people respond to individual objects but then collections of objects working together. And I think having a backdrop of the 18th century library, for example, one of the children this morning drew the column. And this is no less a representation of the um, lasting um, response that our cultures have to what Vinkelman was bringing to northern climes, shall we say, an appreciation of ancient decorative styles and ideas. Also one of the things about Vinkelman is he was very interested in looking um, and he really um, was interested in um, very, very detailed description um, and actually sometimes quite emotional description of his reaction to the artworks. Um, he writes in a very accessible way and I think that's something people can really get a hold of because you don't need a whole kind of armory of scholarship behind you in order to look at an object and have a response to it. Um, and that's been um, a good way in in terms of engaging people with, with Inkelman's work and the objects he enjoyed looking at. We were, the, the exhibition was visited by school children to preschool children and uh, the, the range of activities that, that were uh, set up for each and every uh, of these type of visitors uh, were really well thought through and had, an, had a profound impact.